I, I have to ask you this question. Reed Mouse just posted a short while ago um, that ESPN has predicted every game in the NFL for the rest of the season. I don't know if they're running them through some, some computer or whatever it is they're doing and algorithms and all that kind of thing. Did you see what they are predicting the game to be here on Monday night, the score? Did I've you guys see this? Up. Yeah, I've we have it pulled, pulled up. up. We'll show it. people. Take a look at this. They are predicting the Buffalo Bills are coming to Cincinnati and beating, not beating, destroying the Bengals by a final score of 37 to 9. I mean, Paul, you're a big, you know, algorithms guy. Casey, you're <laughs> dialed in all this sort of nonsense. What sort of algorithm would be would be punched in that would lead you to believe? And look, I don't know any more than they do. I don't know any less than they do. I, but who in their right mind really believes that Buffalo would come in here and win 37 to 9? Did you see the rest of the scores? Like the commanders no, scoring. Let's put it back up there. Yeah, here. Look at look at the one right above it. The commanders forty one to ten against the Browns with Carson Wentz starting. I mean, the they've got the Raiders. Thirty on the Jacks. That they've got the Ra They got the Raiders with a backup quarterback who's making his first start. Now that they bench Carr, are we sure they this have is the Raiders a beating the Forty ers are we sure this isn't a Reed Mouse troll job? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is bad. I don't see a single score on here that makes a whole lot of sense. Because even the scores where teams win that make sense, maybe except the Chiefs, like the, the amount of points scored don't make a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Giants 34, you. Colts 0, Eagles 44, Saints 27. I mean, Bucks, Bucks 24, Panthers 21 could happen, but... I mean, even the even the games where the result looks like it matters and, and makes sense, the score looks off. L well, look at the Jags. How many times has a team scored 16 points? Think about it. It doesn't yeah. happen often. Yeah, well, clearly they're using something here to come up with these numbers. But I mean, I could see where they project the Bills to win because, you know, Vegas, a, a lot of yeah. people are saying the Bills will right. win. But, right. but to win 37 to 9, that's that's like – somebody gets hurt or the Bengals choose to bench people kind of numbers. It's disrespectful. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, look, these are really smart people at ESPN. I mean, they, they obviously, they, they have incredible resources, incredible resources. So, you know, whatever it is they're doing or whatever kind of computer projections, are, I mean, they're not like, you know, hiring – uh, a bunch of 14-year-olds sitting around in a basement to come up with this stuff. Although you look at some of those numbers and you wonder if that's not exactly what they did. But if, <laughs> what, what computer algorithm could possibly spit out with a straight face some of the numbers that are on those projected scores for this weekend? Madden, <laughs> the video game. I mean, even right. that was kind of unbelievable. Yeah, it's so weird. It's such. Well, a Brandon Seho does that thing where he 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 plays the model right all year long. We've talked about this. Has he done the one for the Bengals game yet this week? Brandon, have you done the the model for the Bengals this week yet? Did you do that last night? Yes. What was the What was the score? Uh, the Bengals. Bengals. I gotta take a they won. won, according to Brandon's projection. And that's all. We're waiting on the score, yeah. but the Bengals won. Waiting on the score. Wasn't he the guy that sat there and broadcast the game? <laughs> what did he say? He said, weren't you the one sitting there broadcasting it? <laughs> Ask him if he remembers all of his scores. <laughs> he wants to know if you remember all of your scores that you broadcasted. <laughs> well, I would remember the one from the night Last before. night. <laughs> I was doing one game a week, okay? One game a week I was broadcasting. Uh, there's a good chance that I would have a rough idea of the score. So I'm, if it was 24 to 17 or 16, okay, maybe you don't have it. He just did this game last night. <laughs> I don't know. We're still looking. They don't, they don't Do you have any okay. idea, Brandon? Yeah, I 
We got no idea. No, we got no clue. Okay. No, All right. Okay. Like 17 to 6. 17 to 6 is his guess. Wow. Okay. Low score. No, I mean, that, that to, to me, that's almost as much of a shocker knowing what kind of offenses these two teams have. That's almost as much of a shocker as 37 to 9 Buffalo. I mean, to think that you would get 23 points combined. What's the over under in this game, Paul? The total, it's kind of moved around a little bit. The total right now is sitting at 49 and a half. Um, it's gone up and down, but now it's back to where it opened at 49 and a half. Okay, and where is the money going right now? You, I ask you these questions all the time about where is the majority of the money going and where where's the big money going? Yeah, so the majority of the bets are on Cincinnati at one and a half. 64% of the bets are on Cincinnati, but Tom, 88% of the money is on Buffalo. So The big that, money. Yeah, that's a 50... A 52% discrepancy there between uh, between the money and the percentage of the bets. That's huge. You don't see that too much. I'm just curious. Will you check the money line? The money line? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll, wait, see, hold see on. What the... Hold on. I, yep. Yep. Uh, on the money line, everybody's on the bills as well. 75% and 83%. So, it's... They're, they're getting what they thought they were going to get out of this game as far as bets go, I think. Okay. It's basically a pick em. It opened at 2.5. It's down to 1.5, and, a half, and I, I doubt it moves much from the 1.5 because that's where it's been really all week. But that's moving in the Bengals' favor, right? I mean, yeah, by a point, but nothing. No, it's not like it's you know it opened at 2.5 and, and now the Bengals are favored. It might. In all right, but let me, let me ask yeah. you this. You've been doing on your show, uh, Paul, you've been doing um, Gambling 101, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. On your show, not too picky. So walk me and others through when you basically see something like this, okay, where the majority of bets are being placed. If I heard you right, correct me if I'm wrong. The majority of bets are being placed on the Bengals. But the big money crowd, the guys that allegedly, you know, uh, have, have some inside info, guys that do this for a living, make a living from this, 80-something um, percent of that money is going to Buffalo. Yeah. Historically speaking, and, and I'm not holding you to, to give me a number here, but just for, for, for the novices out there like myself and others. Sure. Sure. What is the end result most of the time when you see um, spreads like that? Meaning, d does the team, in this case, would the Bengals normally win a game like this just based on track record? Or would the big money Sark, so to speak, would they be correct more times than not in that assessment the Buffalo wins a game? Well, I, you know, it's it's tough when you say this because it's there's a couple of things here is because the spread is so close. So a lot of times, like when you look at – the college football playoff this weekend, for example, you know, the spread in the Georgia and Ohio State game is six and a half and where all the money is coming in on Georgia, Georgia could still win the game, but they could win it by a field goal right at the end and Ohio State could cover. So when you're looking at this and you say, are they going to win? Or are they not? You know, when you're looking at a, a one point game, it's a little bit different just because that's so close. How often does an NFL game end at a one point differential enough right. that it matters? We've gone through that on the show. You and I have talked about that, Tom, Casey, we've all sat here yep. and gone through that. It happens enough that it matters to have that one point instead of just taking it on the money line. But as far as how often a, a team like this wins, you know, you, you would say, we, we talk about this a lot, where you talk about how much the Sharps know versus how much the public knows. And right now, the public is clearly on Cincinnati at the one and a half because Cincinnati's on a historic run right now, 20 and three in their last 23 games covering the spread. They're the best team against the spread in the last two years. It's tough to say when the money's coming in like this. In, so, you don't really see it all that much where it's, you know, 52% difference that's a huge difference um i'll be honest tom i i don't really know how to interpret this one at one and a half because the way it's coming in right now you would you would think that maybe that this is a Bengals play the way that it's coming in um or at least looking at the money on the money line but the spread yeah. has all, all the spread has all that money on buffalo which would make me think that if i'm a buffalo better i'm feeling pretty good about myself 
Okay. All right. All right. Well, you, you know, you, you start looking at this game, and they're talking about the potential of this being, and I know Trace touched on it a little bit yesterday, but there are some out there, and there was a long story written about uh, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, who will be broadcasting this game on Monday night. And, of course, for years and years, they would do the biggest game in the NFC. They've never done a monster game in the AFC. Some are saying, and, and some of the numbers don't lie, the number of wins combined by the two teams, the most in 30-something years and all that kind of thing. But uh, they're saying this is the biggest Monday night football game in maybe two or three decades. Because, you know, let's face it, uh, with all the money that Fox is paying for the NFC package, that CBS pays uh, for the AFC package, and then um, what – uh, NBC pays for that Sunday night package. The Monday night schedule has not been a good schedule, uh, by and large, for a long, long time. They'll run into a good game every now and again, like they've run into this one. They don't have the power to flex out games to a Monday night like Sunday night football can do. Um, I got to believe, and I said it, uh, Casey, and I know you've been a big Bengals fan for a long, long time. Uh, I made the comment with Doc the other day. I really believe this is the most anticipated regular season game and I don't know if I could pinpoint one game going back to the Boomer Esiason days because you guys weren't even born then um, there were a couple of games during that run where the Chicago Bears came into town uh, you know William Refrigerator Perry and Walter Payton and all these guys who had won a Super Bowl uh, they played at Riverfront Stadium but that was an afternoon game um, I got to believe I'm not there, but I got to believe that's all anybody in the whole town is talking about. Is that fair to say? Yeah, um, I would totally agree with that. But it's not just the town either. Um, we did this yesterday on our show. Uh, Reed did an excellent job finding some, some, some stats to, to talk about. And this is the third time on Monday Night Football that two teams at 11 plus wins are going at it to yeah. fight for the first place that there's so much riding on this game that not only is it just like a big game for Bills and Bengals, it's like the biggest Monday night football game in, in a long time. Probably the biggest game in the whole season. If you want to even take it that far. I mean, you're, you're fighting for first place. You're fighting for seeding. You're fighting for respect. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a Monday – or I'm trying to think of a game this NFL season – that has been or would be bigger than this. I guess maybe a game in week 18 fighting for a division, but yeah, I mean, this is fighting for the number one seed, potentially, depending on what shakes out with Kansas City. And we might have an answer to that on Sunday, depending on what Kansas City does. So I, I look at this, Tom, and say, what game have we seen this season that would be bigger than this? 